Hello and welcome to a Brucey bonus episode of Off The Fence For You, brought to you, of course, in association with Ball Sports. And that is one of the key reasons we are bringing you this bonus episode, because, of course... The Ball Sports Irish Grand National is just around the corner this Easter weekend. Big meeting at Fairy House and I have got Barry Geraghty and Tony Keenan alongside me to not only preview the Ball Sports Irish Grand National but a couple of the Grade 1 races as well and we've got a couple of other talking points in there but it's a bonus episode for you. We will kick straight on. Um, Barry Geraghty, Ball Sports have sponsored the Irish Grand National 10 years. You were telling me just before we click record on this show uh, and it was 10 years ago that you actually won the race yourself yeah shut the front door 2014 um a brilliant day for me i'm sitting here about six miles from various um and i grew up not for, much further away from there so um it was a race i was long to win um i had hadn't got even gone close in a good few attempts so it was a brilliant race to get um and yeah that was a massive massive win and you only appreciate it when you win it because i probably blocked it out of my mind um because i'd had no luck at all but uh i think it was it was increased to half a million that year and, and it's been at that level since so it's it's a really strong race um you know rightly so and it, it, draw, it draws a quality field absolutely did you enjoy a few celebrations that night you won it I did, I did. I, was actually, I think it was in Ludlow the following day. Somehow I managed to get Ooh, there. Nice. But no, I, I, yeah, I had a good night though. <laughs> good, good. Uh, Tony, how much has the Irish Grand National, if at all, sort of changed, either as a race, like the type of horses that are running in it, but even in the sort of public consciousness over in Ireland, is it still as important a race as ever? I think it's always been a huge race in, in the public consciousness. Um, I would have friends and people who you know would have only a passing interest in in racing like and it would be the grand national Ch- maybe less so Cheltenham, but, but fairy house at easter would, would be a, a big thing for a lot of them and there'd be a lot of people who go racing on uh, easter sunday and easter monday that wouldn't um typically go i suppose even from up my neck of the woods fairy house isn't all that far away so yeah you, you, you'd be surprised who you'd meet there people who you, you'd, ne- you'd never see the racetrack um leopardstowns at christmas or galway or any of the core of irish derby but you would see them actually on easter monday um at fairy house definitely and how has the race changed well i think barry's kind of mentioned it there already like when the prize money went up um i suppose i, I think it was the year air duke won it that the prize money kind of skyrocketed and that's increased the quality of the race however i would say that this year um the quality seems to have dipped a little bit i, I think it's more like just another good stay in handicap chase this year i think since they put the prize money up the top weight has Kind of, I just got him one five six one six six. That was the year Bells Hill ran. That was an absolutely brilliant race that year. He kind of threw it in a little bit, coming to the last. He looked at them all, ends up beating and Gordon had the winner. I think it was what was a general principle set things up brilliantly for Punches Town and um, himself and Willie Munting went down to the last day. A brilliant run of it that year. So one five seven, one five three, one five eight, and one sixty. Now this year, your top weight, you're looking at. Um, Farouk Delen, who is just one five three, and then the next horse down from him is one four eight. Now I wouldn't be surprised if Farouk Delen goes to eight three. Um, he has the kind of option of going there, so I think it's probably not going to be quite the quality race that it has been in the last few years. Still very competitive. Um, but will they get a max field? I'm I'm not quite sure. But I just suppose there's so many options for these horses. A lot of Irish horses ran the Kim Muir. A lot of horses who would have got gotten into this. Um, went there. Entry is a huge throw. We've heard so much in the last couple of weeks. Like, what is that? There's only, I think, five or six English horses guaranteed to run in Liverpool. So, yeah, there's just loads of other options, and I suppose maybe it has had a little bit of a negative effect on Fairy House. Right. Well, given everything Tony's just said, then Barry, uh, and the difference in the race and the field that we're looking at lining up on Easter Monday, uh, Nick Rocket is currently four to one at the top of the market with Ball Sports. Um, obviously trained by Willie Mullins, but in behind there's a whole host of runners and a a real healthy variety of different trainers, uh, owners, silks, and obviously loads of jockeys will get an opportunity in here. So we love to see it, but let's get down to the nitty gritty. Who have you narrowed your shortlist down to in the Ball Sports Irish Grand National? Yeah, no, I'd I'd agree with Tony. It it looks an open race and Nick Rocket, it's it's easy to make a, a case for him and he's, I suppose he is the right favourite, but if you were to look through it and try and find who's potential in the handicap um 
Good Time Johnny won the Bretemps last year off of a mark of 142. He's rated 132 over fences. Um, now, he caught my A in the DRF and I flagged him up as a tracker then when he was, um, I think he was fifth over two mile five in that percent that weekend, which was a good run. Um, his jumping was average to begin with, but he has got better. I think he's developed a technique. Now, he does need to improve a lot on his last run, but he has a tendency, if you look at his form last season on the run to the Bretemps, um, he had some average form through the winter and found his form in the spring for the big day. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him go a similar route again this year. Um, probably doesn't want it to be bottomless. There's a good bit of rain forecast, but I'm not sure it's going to be any worse than soft. Um, so I think he'd be he'd be definitely one of interest in the handicap. And the other one who's taken a big drop is any second now. is down twenty pound since when he won the Webster Cup in Navan last this time last year. Um, he beat Velvet Elvis that day. Now he has obviously good national form in England. He disappointed in the race last year. He has struggled this winter, but. You know, some of his form over the previous winters, he has struggled as well. So, But just with that drop of £20, he is a 12-year-old. He's lots against him. But in what looks an open race, he could be very well into. Wow, OK. Well, look, thanks to Ball Sports, and of course you winning this race 10 years ago, they've been very generous, Barry Garrity, with your selections uh, because we have price boosts for you. And we've got three of them, and two of them are obviously the horses that you have just tipped up. So Good Time Johnny was 16 to 1, has been boosted out to 20 to 1, uh, and Any Second Now was 14 to 1, and has been boosted out to 16 to 1 with that 20 pound drop. Wow. Um, you can find the link to the offers in the YouTube video description, and it's available to new and existing customers. Prices are subject to change, staking limits, and further T's and C's will apply. Please read the T's and C's. You can find all the details in the show's description below. Tony, who would you like to add into the mix in terms of, well, the winner, ideally, of the Ball Sports Irish Grand National? I have four on my shortlist, and I two of them are the same as Barry, actually. So I will just mention maybe some of the ones at the front of the market because it actually doesn't contain any of them. Just with Nick Rocket... Um, You'd, ha you'd have to respect the, the, the trainer. This is the type of horse he, he does well in, um, with in it. Um, Borough, St. Gaillard, the Mani, novices that were kind of coming into the race, uh, out of graded races and so on. Uh, the only little thing I have with Nick Rockett is a little bit disappointed he didn't win in, in Navin, um, the 10 up in a race that was probably set up for him. I thought he sat in the right position off the pace. They went really hard up front, Manella Kakuna and Favori to Sean Dew, and he still couldn't get the better of American Mike. Um, it was a very good course for him, but I think at 4 to 1, he, he's quite skinny actually. Um, Intense Raffles is next in the market. They're very, very hard horse to rate. And I see even the handicapper Sandy Shaw say, saying the same. He, he doesn't know whether he has him £10 too high or £10 too low. Um, really impressive the last day, but you know, I don't think the Anton ran its race remotely in behind. So a very hard horse to know with him. Um, I think I'd like a little bit more solidity now if I was taking six or seven to one about him. Um, heart or Dark, yeah, getting really good in Ace the last day. Trainer was a bit worried about the trip going into Nace. This is, is going to be another five furlong, so I just wonder about his stamina for, for, for the trip. Same trainer that Gavin Cromwell has, yeah, man. Yeah, hey, Doc, good performance, looks kind of solid. That silver lining has been running well in all these type of races all season. Nothing about yeah, man is, though, he does find it a bit hard to get his head in front, kind of prior to that, anyway. I think that was only a second win ever, so yeah, we'll, we'll see about him. Desert Moore House, I think his chance are probably dependent on the ground trying out a little bit. Ran a nice race and perhaps qualifier in the the last day. Um, Hard to know what to make of his, his form winning the Kerry National back in September. And then Senior Chief, um, I suppose the race he won in Punchestown the last day, it was set up that no horse could really be impressed with so steadily run. Um, but his kind of mark is coming from his run behind Manella Kakunar um, at Navan. And that horse kind of has disappointed twice since, to my mind. So, yeah, they, they're the front five or six in the market. But I was coming down to the uh, top of my list, actually, would be again, would be good time, Johnny. Like, I'm just expecting him to come to life in, in the most valuable handicap he's, he's contested so far. Barry's outlined the case there, his mark relative hurdles to chase from. I thought he caught the eye in the DRF race. That race, there was nothing really come into it from off the pace. He was the only one. Um, look, if he was seven or eight to one, I wouldn't be interested in him. Because there is the concern about his jumping and the concern is he as good a chaser. But ten pound lower mark, you're getting sixteen or twenty to one. I th I think he's well worth a shot. Second horse on my list um, is another Willie Montrose down at the very bottom, called We'll Have One. <coughs> he was back if defeat was out of the question. The Punchestown Grand National Trial. Um, and I suppose if you're looking at that race, you'd be saying, Asher, he, he didn't really get home then. He, he's hardly going to get home at Fairy House. Uh, I think I'd give him another chance though to get home. I, I, 
he over raced there and, and they kind of rode him quite forward. I'd be expecting different tactics on him this time. It's a type of thing that Team Mullins kind of figure out. Um, I think they want to cover him up and maybe arrive a bit later than they did at Punches. And like he got to the last goal in Besta and just kind of it didn't last him. Now maybe it is a stamina thing, but sometimes horses can settle better on the kind of slightly different tactics. And I'd say he's almost certainly well handicapped, um, if not maybe for this trip back at, at three miles, because he's off 120 in Punches down. He's off 123 here. He'd be one you could. I wouldn't necessarily be interested in backing him each way, but I'd be interested in backing him and then laying back a bit and running because I could see him kind of travelling well into it. Any second now, it was kind of fourth on my list. I just thought he had a just an obvious chance to drop him kind of in the weights. I think he's probably a better horse in the spring as well. Um, I thought he actually didn't run too bad in the, in the Punchestown Grand National Trail. And again, Mark is kind of reflect. Mark has really given him a chance. And the, the third or fourth one on my list was Favori de Sean Du. Um, I just think he's a complete another right handed horse. His record right-handed is really excellent. Um, he was kind of a dominant winner of uh, the Florida Pearl of Punchestown back in November. I thought his jumping was really good that way around. The form, just very hard to know what he actually achieved that day because um, Sander Clegane was off afterwards and had a wind operation and Florian Porter doesn't go right-handed. But he, he won a long, long way. I think a long ago, he's gone left-handed last twice. Uh, I think in both cases... That doesn't suit him, obviously, but there are other reasons as well why he, he disappointed a bit. I thought the ground was maybe a little bit on the quick side at Leperstown, and then in Navin he got into a pace back with Manella Cocooner. He wouldn't be the first Jigginstown horse to bounce back to form in, in this race. So they'd kind of be the four I'd be looking at, but in all the good time, Johnny, um, we'll have one for de Sean do and um, any second now. Beautiful. Okay, perfect. Good few darts then to throw at the Irish Grand National. And we'll have one is the third of our price boost as well, as you will see. Uh, was 14 to 1, has been boosted out to 16 to 1. As I said earlier, that is for a limited time only, but it's courtesy of Ball Sports and it's available to new and existing customers. So do get involved, but of course, do it responsibly if you do. Uh, that's the big one. And obviously, we are recording this uh, at the start of the week. It's Monday night when we record this. You'll be watching it on Tuesday or Wednesday I would imagine but it means that we don't entirely know what's going to line up in the other races so we'll just have a quick look at the grade ones across the weekend um, the Honeysuckle Mare's Novices Hurdle is on Sunday that's over the two and a half miles now obviously as I say only at the entry stage Barry uh, but we've got a good few UK entries in here and none more so than Dysart Enos who of course due to that very unfortunate small setback couldn't line up at Cheltenham could she go here would be fascinating um, and then you know the, the idea of brighter days ahead and Jade de Grugy potentially lining up I I don't know if you've got any intel on if we'll see either of them but this could be an absolute cracker yeah it could definitely um, and Dice Hardinos you know it's coming here fresh you'd have to give us some sort of chance um, brighter days ahead Jade de Grugy will be interesting I think the two and a half the step up to two and a half will suit brighter days ahead um, so whether Gordon decides to take this option rather than wait for punches then would be interesting um, but I suppose the one that caught my eye was Jatara. Um, she was probably unlucky in Leopardstown that she got a little bit keen in the two mile six race won by uh, Dancing City. Just over raced through the race and Rachel lost her stir believe in the back straight. She got lit up, got racing again. She was only beaten three lengths uh, that day. It was a good run. Dancing City then was a runner up um, to the winner at Cheltenham in the Albert Bartlett who was eight lengths behind Jatara um, on that day. So um, that form works out well. Um, so I think she's the one of interest she has lots of experience she's a second season novice she's nine runs over hurdles but the key to her is just to get her to relax so drop her in a little bit behind the pace if she switches off I think she'll run a big race okay that's a big shout then uh, what about you Tony here with the Bears um, I, I, don't, I don't know what day Sarinos come I, I think two and a half might stretch her they make me think just to wait the entry of the track which she's proven herself before though I do think Fergal O'Brien has another uh, mare in there that's an option um, both riders days ahead and Jade de Grugy 17 days after the dawn run though I would say that I don't think they a particularly hard race there it was a very steadily run race now maybe the travel has taken something out of them but it's very hard to pass up the grade one um, there's no grade one for novice mares of Punchestown uh, this valuable race in terms of status and prize money, so I don't know, they'll, they'll probably find it hard to pass that up. Fun, fun, fun is the other, um, I suppose, big name in the Mullins camp. Uh, they didn't go to Cheltenham with her, she won at an ace the kind of weekend before, it was really impressive. But I, I do wonder, is she a little bit like Dino Blue going for the mayor's chase at, at, at Cheltenham? Not really a two and a half mile mayor, more of a, a two mile, quite fast, and um, so maybe that won't suit ideally. 
um, JP McManus is a horse that won, or mare sorry, that won down in Limerick again just before Cheltenham uh, Bioluminescence, kind of a big scopey one that looks like she's going to be a, a chaser in the future. I believe she's going, Gavin Crom Cromwell trains that. But the one I would, I would get in agreement with Barry again here would be Jatara. I think 2 mid 6 oh. is probably a little bit, little bit too far for her at the Dublin Racing Festival. And come back to two and a half would, would suit her well. She's a lot, a lot of experience. Um, this is probably this has been the I suppose probably the most suitable race for all the season. Now, I don't know. Some of her form works out, some of it doesn't. But I think in terms of suitability, she's one that will probably be on the premises and should run a race. And again, I'd echo all the things that Barry said. There were just a number of small little um, nuanced things that went against her in her February run where she could improve it now. Wow, you boys very much on the same page today. I like this a lot. Bit of confidence here. Uh, let's move on to the Willow Warm Gold Cup. It's over the two and a half miles. And again, there's a whole host of horses in here who aren't going to show up. The likes of Embassy Gardens, uh, Fasal Vega, Factor File, um, Corbett's Cross even. Loads in here with an entry, but we won't expect to see them, obviously. Of the ones that we will hopefully see would blood destiny be a likely runner here obviously one of them in here that skipped cheltenham will come here fresher tony yeah i, th I think both blood destiny and spillance tower the two that ran the flame boat at navin i believe this is both of their targets um blood destiny was very good there in navin his jumping has always looked an asset to give him a different type of raid than they had been given him in his two previous starts dropped him in and kind of rode him for speed and he, he, he was really good I just I just do wonder about the two and a half miles for him. To me, he's looked a two miler and kind of all of his chase starts to date. And I just wonder with Spillane's Tower um, on much better weight terms um, be able to get the ground back. And I thought he beat him quite nicely in the, I think it's the Killeen, obviously, obviously just punched his hand back there in January. So maybe two and a half would see Spillane's Tower um, get his revenge and kind of the, the, the tour meeting between the three of them. Of the rest, again, I, I don't think Gaelic Warrior is going to go, but I'm, I'm sure some of those Cheltenham horses will back up. Um, maybe Fasel Vega, Eletti Thompson has been mentioned as well. He has missed a policeman in there also. So, yeah, again, it, it's a great one, and it's kind of race you can't not have runners in, such as the value of it. So, uh, you know, with maybe no Gaelic Warrior, I, I'd be expecting quite a competitive field here. You should have the, the full each way betting um, available. As a general rule, Tony, just with these sort of races, you know, being, what is it, two and a bit weeks after Cheltenham, and I know it's each horse their own, but in terms of your view on it from a punting point of view, do you try and lean towards the fresher horses right now, or does it that not bother you so much? Oh, it's, it's very hard to know. It, it all depends on price. I do think Cheltenham this season... Um, Maybe talk about this later. We'll talk about a few other things from Cheltenham. But kind of a strange meeting in the fact that it was all run on softer, heavy ground. I know we do odd thing it's slow ground at the festival, but really testing ground is unusual. How's that form going to translate back to back to Fairy House and Punchestown? Very different tracks. Uh, you would have hoped that the ground would have dried out a little bit. Be Punchestown and Punchestown is is starting kind of in very late April, May this year. Fairy House looks like the ground is going to be testing. You say, oh, maybe the form will work out, but. Then again, a hard racing testing ground two and a half weeks ago isn't ideal for coming to, coming to Fairy House. So you know, it, it's it's very, very hard to say. Um, and even the fact that Willie Mullins, like with Nick Rocket there, for instance, and Blood Destiny and Fun Fun Fun, like he said, and now William kind of um, specifically at Fairy House, probably due to the um, proximity of the of Chatham. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Um... Barry, back to the Willow on Gold Cup. Two horses there that, of course, Tony has mentioned. They've been friends of the podcast, really, or friends of the show, I should say. Um, in Blood Destiny, a horse that you were very keen on in various stages of last season. And then Spillane's Tower, who's done us a few favours this season for the Off the Fence viewers. Uh, so which way are you going here in the Willow Warm? Yeah, well, Tony mentioned that race in, in Punchestown and Blood Destiny looked a sure winner and he cut out like a light um, at the last. So he was a little bit disappointing and it would be easy to blame the trip. Um, but he did put in a good performance when he beat Hartwood over two and a half in this prior to that and was very good in Navin and the Flying Bull. So I think I'm just going to forgive him that run um, in Punchestown. I take a punt on him. As Tony said, they rode him slightly different in, in Navin, a little bit more conservative. So I think just hanging on to a little bit he probably is the one to beat. Um, he was very impressive at the same points, and he's been very impressive in all he has done. Likewise, Balanzor has improved with every run and has done really well. But 
just the way that Blood Destiny put him to bed the last day, I'd be inclined to go at him. Of the others, um, as Tony mentioned, a lot of them ran a chat and whatnot. I thought maybe found a 50. Um, will he go to punch down and take on Gaelic Warrior again? I'm not so sure. So um, maybe him and Alete Tom could line up again. But it's very hard to know who's going to bounce back from Cheltenham. It's a very individual thing. Some horses travel, take the trip easy. They settle in Cheltenham. They relax, they eat, they drink. Everything goes fine and they come home. They don't take as much out of themselves. Others are a little bit more uptight, don't settle in so well. So it, it, it takes more than a run out of them, if you know what I mean. So it, it can set some back more than others. So it's it just depends on the individual and it's very hard to know. But found a 50 and I let it hump. I thought it would be two that, that would probably line up. Yeah, and like you say, until you actually sort of press the button in a race, you really can't know with what they're doing at home because they'll have done very little work, obviously, in between. Um, but... Fairy House this weekend will provide plenty of answers. Uh, Barry, before we move on from Fairy House and just touch on a few other topics, is there any other horses at this very early stage that you'd like to give a mention to for the viewers out there? Yeah, there's a nice handicap portal on the Saturday. Uh, Jet Lange is in. Um, he was 18 minutes behind uh, Ballyborn at the Dublin Racing Festival. Um, it was his first run since May when he beat Samoa in a maiden hurdle in Tipperary. Um, has only had the three starts. Um was a uh, second placed in a in a in a hurdle in a tie, um. But I thought first uh, with that run under its belt could be nice in here in a handicap on on Saturday. Okay, good to mention then. Um, and in other news, Barry, obviously we are following the Irish Jockeys Championship, uh, a bit closer now in the closing weeks of the season, and of course it will run right the way through to the end of Punchestown, and it could go right to the wire between Jack Kennedy and Paul Townend. Jack Kennedy on 115 winners currently, and Paul Townend just a handful behind on 108. Um, Barry, I suppose, how do you see this panning out? Uh, do you? It will Paul Townend be able to just gain this back with a with a strong spring or do you think uh jack is a bit more up for it i, I wouldn't necessarily say that i'd say they're both well up for it and um, paul is selective on what he writes mm. um on the big days or at the big meetings because he doesn't want to miss gallop in the champ of the gold cup for riding something in a handicap so i wouldn't blame him for that and um, but he is booked to ride one for sunny Carey in wexford on wednesday um and he's only had about a half dozen outside rides. He's had no outside winner all season. So he doesn't take too many rides. He's riding one there and he was, that might be one to keep an eye on. Um, but for me, the, the, the stable strength, the stable form is going to be the thing that, that sets them apart. So Jack has ridden all bar seven winners, I think, um, for Gordon. So he's, he's, his main supplier is Gordon. Last year, Gordon had nine winners for the month of April, where Willie had 36. Now, I would expect I would expect Gordon to do better this season, potentially. His horses weren't as ready for their first run. So if you say Down Royal, for example, he had a good few horses that needed to run there, improved for, and ran well and went and won at Christmas, if you want. Um, that delay to his, to his early season form, just not peaking up so soon, might stand to him in the second half. So I'd see Gordon having a better month of April, but I can't imagine he's going to match what Willie has. So um, I'd say if Paul stays in one piece... Um, He's probably the one to beat. It'll be, it'll be, a, but it could be a close one. Oh, I hope, I hope, for, sort of, for the narrative, Tony, that it does run pretty close to Punchestown. But those numbers are pretty stark. I, like you said, like Barry says, obviously Gordon will be hoping for a much better April than that. But still, the sort of April uh, that Willie Mullins has in store is a pretty terrifying thing. If you're Jack Kennedy, I would imagine. Of course it is, yeah. I think Jack got two winners at Limerick yesterday that, that weren't necessarily expected. He didn't seem too confident and he was interviewed before a race and um, he has a bit of a ban coming up this week though. Like Wexford, I'd say now on Wednesday, it sounds like it's fairly iffy when they're expecting and, and choose the first. I was just looking, I think there's 25 meetings left in Ireland um, f for the rest of the season. Um, two of those are double meetings Cork and Ferry House are both racing on Easter Sunday and Easter Monday so it's down to 23 really um, and then there's also a meeting I think at Limerick on the first day of entry so neither of them may be around for that either so you're down to what 22 meetings and whatever maybe six races a day they can actually ride in because bumpers and, and what have you I think Ruby Walsh was saying on television there's about 120 races so it's not, it's not really an awful lot um, Left really a seven seven winner head start is a decent amount so you know it does set up well. I think Barry hit the nail in the head there with the stable strength. I, I'm interested to see what Gordon Elliott does with entry this year because he, he did go hard at entry now last season, um, run the likes of Irish Point and um, 
Jerry Kalam. I think he may have another winner kind of along with that. So I just wonder, will he maybe do that again? Will he take those horses to Liverpool or might he be inclined to, to run those back to punches down? But yeah, I think it'll get the punches down anyway. Um, and I, I do think the Gordon Elliott, like, if horses kind of dipped in form a little bit there in early January, I wonder maybe was that a little bit intentional. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully it does. I, I think a very, very interesting story um, at the moment anyway. I think Jack Kennedy's riding with a real bit of an edge at the moment, which is, again, it's, it's going to make it more enjoyable and more competitive. Yeah, I love it. We we need that, don't we? I mean, we always, it's a cliche to say it, but we bang on about that when the Trainers' Championship went right down to Punchestown between Gordon and Willie a few years back. And that really got everyone talking and it was a great thing to follow, obviously going Willie's way in the end. But it was right down to the wire and we love it. Yeah, I'll be rooting for Jack Kennedy, something a bit different. And he's had such a tough time of it with those injuries. But anyway, let's move on. Um, we're not doing track of time, guys, to wrap up the show. But we will throw a few horses your way from the Cheltenham Festival that you may have missed. But of course, Tony Keenan has not missed them because he's had plenty of time now to look back at a few race replays, Tony. So flag yeah. us up a few horses that we should be keeping an eye on, please. Yeah, I'm going to try anyway. I actually have to be... <laughs> You know, I was chatting to a few people who who do kind of similar stuff to this, you know, looking at replays afterwards, and, and they kind of were saying similar. It actually wasn't that interesting at Cheltenham to review. Now, usually you would have an absolute ton of horses coming out of it. I don't know what it was. Was it the small fields? Was it the, the fact the ground was very soft? That I don't know, the riders give each other a bit more space. There didn't seem to be as much trouble. Definitely over the first two days, there were more eye catchers up the corner. Last bank all the month than there were in the first two days of Cheltenham, as far as I'm concerned. But I've gone with kind of five here that all about one of them was kind of outside the places so hopefully there, there might be a winner here for the rest of spring anyway I, I mentioned one or two of them last week I thought Fishery Lane fifth, fifth in the champion bumper like, like, a very very promising run for, for what was a maiden he should have won on debut at Torless shape like the best horse there but came from behind Jasmine Defoe just, just, just a really excellent effort there didn't get a hard time late and yeah as I said just whatever bumper that isn't a greater race that they're running he should be able to, to win that Git Maker was second in the Kim Muir. Like, like just talk about running into one. He, he, he couldn't have probably met a worse rival or a better handicapped horse than any race he was going to run all season. And I know what you're thinking. Um, like everything screamed to him that he was a Stonewell in and so it proved whether it be the raid, the market support, all that type of stuff. But Git Maker has managed only to go up a pound for this, which is very, very lean. And I know he's beaten a fair old way, but some very solid horses in behind him there, like Wacker Clan, where it all began, Daily Present, all banging for him. Um, in the talking horse I suppose in the run up to the triumph was Salvatore Mundi uh, he finished 6th but I, I thought he shaped really well a very strongly run race relative to the county hurdle it's just the sort of thing I, I think horses coming off a break or having their first start for a yard and been thrown into the deep end they just find it really hard to cope with that um, it's just kind of shock the system a bit like a Rocco in the in the turners like just coming in cold to that it's just it's just not not ideal they're not conditioned for it so I just thought he did very well he travelled nicely out in Rio made a bit of nice headway into it didn't get a hard time I'm sure they're more than happy that he's going to remain a novice for next season and he'd be one you definitely would think be getting back to Cheltenham Albert Bartlett was kind of unusual for an Albert Bartlett the, the front two kind of had it between them from a long way out and even Dancing City the tour was up there but spread bust head who hadn't run in any greater races all along was only coming from kind of ordinary novice hurdles did shape well in 40 far and away the best of the hold up horses he went around the inside for, for most of the race which seemed not to be the place to be on the Friday and finished off well like um, that whole three mile division would look very um, open I think going to Punchestown is going to often be the way um I think he'd have a chance in that race. And then Jungle Boogie, like while he finished last of the six finishers in the Gold Cup, I, I thought he went really well. It was actually a bit of a gamble on this horse, kind of a bit of an out of nowhere. He's a, probably the outsider of the field, but kind of half the price on the day. Travelled very smoothly into the race, um, hit three out when he was going kind of well, and just, just, just ran a really nice race. And the problem with him is you, you couldn't consider backing him for any race until he's actually declared because he's been so fragile over the years. But... Punchestown Gold Cup maybe would be one from kind of a less testing track down a, a four long or two and trip. Um, nicer ground might be the job. So, yeah, they were the five that that maybe, I suppose, uh, out, they finished outside of the frame that might be a little bit interesting whether they go to the entry of Punchestown or even into next season. 
Love that. You've really helped us out there. And look at this proof that we do listen to you, Tony. As you said, those, I've just got my notepad and pen out myself to scribble those names down into the tracker, the At The Races tracker, of course, the horses go. Uh, thank you very much for that, Tony. Um, and that about wraps up our bonus episode. As I think I've told you all before out there, we have a few bonus episodes coming your way. We will have one for the National, Punchestown, etc., etc. But for now, we have a couple of weeks off. You get to enjoy the bank holiday and, of course, the ball sports irish grand national do avail of those price boosts if you so wish good time johnny will have one and any second now have all been boosted courtesy of ball sports because they are such generous sponsors so thank you very much to them for that and of course t's and c's do apply barry garrity and tony keenan thank you very much as always and listeners and viewers out there thank you very much we'll be back with an aintree special in a couple of weeks but for now enjoy the bank holiday that was off the fence